Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Infinite, Oro Maestra, Pro Yema, thank you for coming through. Um, Tamela, thank you for coming through. Stanley, um, so I'm just going to wait one more minute for one or two other people to come through. It's going to be recorded anyways. We're recording the session. So in case you guys miss anything, um, you guys will get a chance to go through it later. Just a second. Right, so one more minute and we're literally going to get started because there is a few things to get through. Right. Just one second. Mommy. <laughs> You don't give me the <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So, guys, I'm literally going to start now. So, any questions, put it in the. Just put it in the. In case I come out every so often, I'm trying to allow people in at the same time. So, in case I get a little bit distracted. Right, so I'm just going to share my screen. So today we're literally talking about playlisting, um, why playlisting is important for you guys as artists, or if you're managers, if you are um, if you're a label, if you do PR for like a label. Um, so we're going to literally get straight into it. So let me know. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Let me know if you guys are able to see my screen. Don't forget to mute your... Please mute your call as you come in. Mute your call as you come in, please. Can you guys can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can see my screen. Okay, awesome. Keep right, so, um, okay. Right. So today we're literally um going to talk about the importance of playlisting um and how to kind of um, get playlisted. Um and I'm trying, going to try and zoom through it, but please uh, try and take notes if you want to. But if you can't, it will be recorded and you guys will get a chance to look at the replay a bit uh, later on. Right, so let's get straight into it. Um, who am I? Um, I'm Steve Osage. Um, I'm an artist, ma artist manager for over 20 years. Um, I'm also a music consultant and a digital marketing expert for over 12 years. Um, I also organize a lot of music conferences um, I don't know, some of you might know of a music conference that we do in Lagos called Medem. Medem are like one of the biggest music conferences in the world. They've been on for like 60 years. So I'm officially the African and Nigerian partner. So we officially have the, the number one, um, sorry, hold on, still trying to get it. We officially actually do the African um, pavilion in Nigeria and also in France as well. I also manage and I manage a couple of artists. I manage JJC, managed JJC for over like about eight years and I've consulted for a bunch of different artists, including Online Day, I'm Idi Kabasa's official business manager and people that know me, know me in the industry. Um, but everybody knows me as the spotlight. Um, that's who I go by. So again, um, art manager for over 12 years, music consultant, and digital marketing expert. So I also advise and consult a lot of artists when it comes to social media and digital um, aspects of the music business. So I run Spotlight Management and Consultancy as well as the digital marketing agency. And I also do a podcast as well that advises and just gives, I interview a lot of um, people within the music industry, um, professionals, other artists or established individuals on just giving a lot of advice on how you can be successful within the music industry. And I also have a brand called the Music Business Success Academy. Um, that's literally who I am in case you guys obviously don't know me. And this is obviously powered. Um, this is obviously um, just really giving you guys a lot of insights and educating you guys on how important playlisting is. Um, so I'm literally gonna go straight into it. So what is playlisting? A lot of people, some of you obviously 
if you know when it comes to most of the streaming services that you're on, you also understand that we live in an age where consumption of music happens in little bites and it, you don't listen to, unless it's a real popular artist or an artist that you really have your super fan of, you're gonna consume that person's music either you know, in a single or in little bits. So basically imagine your, your playlisting is literally like your new radio station. And the, the playlist now has literally blown up a lot of artists where you can get added to a playlist and that can tremendously increase your possibility of being discovered or your songs having millions and millions of streams across a range of different platforms. That's why every single platform that you, you see from Deezer to Spotify to Audio Mac to Apple Music, they all have playlists. They all have a range of different playlists. Um, so basically, a playlist is just, is when you playlist a, an album, when you playlist a song, is basically where those platforms themselves, they them themselves create their own playlist or they use independent creators to kind of list chosen songs that can be specific to a mood or a genre of music. A lot of people normally think that playlisting is just for, okay, like an Afrobeat playlist or a Nigerian playlist. So that's what the kind of playlist a lot of people normally go for. What people actually fail to realize is some of the biggest playlists, if you go on to like Spotify, if you go on to Audio Mac, some of the biggest playlists actually have a theme to it. So the theme of the playlist is, for example, you have a, like a playlist like hip hop music to walk out to or um, R&B music to get married to or, you know, um, Afrobeat track I like to, you know, gym to or whatever it is. So the mood of a playlist can also highly determine the pop I go, go, a lot of are coming through. All right, okay. The mood of a playlist can seriously significantly increase your chance of actually being added to a playlist. So if you have a song that you've done and it's an up-tempo song and has a like a real big um, you know, the beat is banging and has a a big sound to it. Um, don't always think, okay, you know what? I'm an Afrobeat artist, I'm a Nigerian artist. I just want to place that song onto an Afrobeat playlist. You'd be surprised that your playlist could do very well in, you know, Afrobeat songs, uh, bed, bedtime Afrobeat songs. Or could you guys, could somebody please mute? If you're not muted, hold a second. Could you please mute yourself so that I'm not, I don't keep on cutting in and cutting out what I'm saying. Um, please, everyone, could everybody please mute? No, I'll just mute everyone. Right. So, besides your the normal genre of music playlist that you would normally have, the mood or the theme of the playlist is a very, very important one. You always want to try and make sure that you seek out those kind of playlists. If it, it can, it can be with in regards to the mood, the theme of a playlist, or whatever it is. Those are also play, very important playlists you want to kind of look out for. Um, let's, let's look at a couple of stacks in regards to how important playlists can actually be. Um, I'm going to bring your attention to a couple of, of playlists. If you look at um, the one that says a lot of the playlists that has been generated, you know, the content, content trumps the creator. What a lot of streaming sites like is they want people to come to their, to their platforms. They want a lot of um, listeners to actually come and listen to a lot of their music that has been presented on that platform. So what happens is you have people who create their own playlist besides the platform themselves creating their own specific playlist. Uh, you know, so a lot, of, a lot of people actually would listen to playlists that have been created besides you know, saying, oh, let me just listen to this music by my uncle. Let me listen to another, you know, David O's whole album. They'll go and listen to a certain specific playlist that's either been curated for Afrobeat listeners, or a certain playlist that is being curated for hip hop listeners, or another playlist that's being created for music from, you know, from from for drill music, for example, you know. So they, a lot of those platforms highly support playlists. So if you create your own playlist, for example, and you put it on a streaming platform, you and you promote it well. At times, they would actually promote that playlist to a lot of their listeners. You know what I mean? So it's very very important that you really take playlisting um, really, really seriously um, because it can be, it can really be the thing that can break you into a new market. It can be the thing that discovers you um, on a lot of the streaming platforms. That is why 
on Spotify, for example, you have what they call Spotify um, New Music Friday um, that happens. You have all this very, very key playlist that everybody wants to try and get, get, get into. It's only now that I think a lot of African artists are trying to get onto a playlist. Um, a lot of American, a lot of British, a lot of rap, R&B artists have been, have been doing playlisting for a long time. Labels actually make sure that their artists are included to a lot of those key editorial playlists, which a lot of the stream flap platforms tend to have. So if you look at one of these things, at uh, the bottom here, it says, one, if you have, uh, half of the playlisters have listened to their favorite playlist more than 10 times. So if you have a playlist and you've been added to a playlist as an artist, you're gonna get people coming back continuously to listen to that playlist. So imagine you getting added to Rap Caviar, for example. Um, so what would normally happen is if you have multiple tracks on Rap Caviar, you're gonna have people coming back to that Rap Caviar playlist continuously over and over and over again to keep on hearing that playlist. What that does is that, that increases the amount, the amount of streams that you have on that platform, which obviously means more money in your pocket. And you also, if your song is being streamed a, a, a longer period of time, the playlist themselves, there's, there's an algorithm that kicks in and the, the streaming platform actually knows what song is being listened to the most. Because the thing a lot of people don't also don't realize is if your song is being listened to, the platform, either like Spotify or Audio Mac, they can tell that, oh, somebody that came on to um, this hip hop playlist only listened to Davido's new song for, for 15 seconds before they went and listened to another song. So that's what a lot of people actually use to determine how long you might stay on a certain playlist. I'll, before I won't go further, there's something that you guys need to really consider. When you are making your songs as an artist, be careful on having long intros in your song. So imagine you've done a song now and there was an artist I was speaking to a couple of weeks ago and the intro, before you even got into the song, the intro of the song was like nearly 30 seconds, close to like nearly 45 seconds. So what you are doing is before the song even starts, Someone is just waiting for the song to begin for 45 seconds or 30 seconds. How long do you think that person is going to be willing to wait before they skip on to, some, to another song? So you really think about how long your intros are. If you, let me give you an example. When um, Tikashi 69 came out a couple of weeks ago, a couple, about a month or two ago, the track he did with, um, with uh, what do you call her name, and kind of blew up on, online. That song is only two minutes, 40 seconds. The song is literally two minutes, 40 seconds. So when the song starts, it went straight into the chorus. It went straight into the song. And so you'd even, there was no lead time. You literally got straight into the music. So when you're creating your music, be very careful on having too long an intro because that's one of the things that playlist curators will look at to determine if they're gonna add your song to a playlist or not. Having too long an intro literally could get you either, being, either losing your fans or someone that runs a playlist will actually not have you included onto that playlist, okay? So right, so why is playlisting um, very important? Um, for a couple of different reasons. When it comes to your music being discovered, discoverability, if you're an upcoming artist, if you're unknown, if you get placed onto a very popular playlist, that could be all you need to really be found by millions of other fans. You know, new fans are actually being discovered the most from playlists, not from their own not from them promoting the music, but because they get added to a variety of different playlists. And the technology as well, and AI, because each of the different streaming platforms, they have, they have like, a, like an algorithm that obviously determines if you should get added or if you, be, you should be promoted to a playlist. Um, most of the time, when you're distributing your music, it's make sure, let's say you, you have a song that wants to come out on December the 1st. Please don't put out, don't now send your music to um, your DSP to, prom to put out the music maybe a week before you, you actually officially want to release your music. The longer time that you have to, to put out your music, the better chance that you actually have to be added to, to a lot of different playlists. If you only give yourself like a week, you're not giving a lot of the streaming platforms enough time for them to actually see where you could get added to. On, on playlists. For example, for Spotify, um, I'm gonna show you how you can obviously claim your own Spotify, your own Spotify 
have handled as well as being added to Spotify playlist for free. But Spotify needs you to submit your songs to them at least, at least, although they say one week before your song comes out officially, but you, the, the lead time really you need to give is at least two to three weeks. Don't rush trying to say, okay, your song wants to come out next week and you think you can get added to playlist this week. It doesn't happen, doesn't happen that quick. Give yourself enough time, at least three weeks to a month from when your song gets uploaded, not from when your fans can see the song, but from when your song gets uploaded to when you can actually now start promoting by through a pre-save. There's a pre-save that you can do for a lot of the streaming sites. Um, Spotify has one, all the other um, streaming um, services have one. You can have a pre-save link that you can send out to all your fans and you can say, listen, pre-save this single um, when, and when it comes out, they will, you get notified. Um, and that will actually help you be able to send your song off to Spotify uh, on the back end to say, listen, I'd like to play this, this song. And, and what they will do is they will send your songs off to a bunch of different playlists to see which one you're best suited for. Um, so basically, uh, playlisting are actually the backbone of, for example, a lot of the streaming um, platforms, their content consumption. Over 4 billion playlists exist on the platform. So over 4 billion. So that just tells you how important playlisting are. Um, Spotify obviously have their own curated playlist. Besides playlists that are created by um, individual, individual individual people, by labels, labels have their own playlist or by moods. You know, so it's really, really important for you to actually get onto a lot of um, um, playlists. If you, if you look at, I'm using Spotify specifically, not just here, but I'm gonna also talk about audio map because I know in Nigeria and Africa, um, audio mic and boom play are one of the biggest platforms that you have. So I know a lot of people say they can't get, they can't get Spotify in Nigeria, but it doesn't mean because Spotify is not in Nigeria, you ignore it because a lot of your international listeners are able to get onto Spotify and able to actually, they, they use Spotify to consume a lot of African, a lot of Nigerian content. So if you look at the Spotify monthly hours that people use to actually consume music, so what, what you have here is the UGC. So that is user-generated content. So somebody like myself, like you, you can create your own playlist and you can actually drive traffic to that playlist. So you have a lot of individuals that would have, there's this DJ called DJ Bolt. Um, he has like a, a very big following um, on YouTube and on Spotify. And he actually does a lot of African playlists. So someone like him just decided that because he's a DJ, I'm going to create a playlist and I'm just going to promote it to my fans. So you, you can see that has one of the highest consumption rates. So besides everybody always wants to get on like an Apple music playlist or they want to get on the Spotify music playlist or they want to get on the boom play playlist. But you'd be surprised that a lot of the individually created playlists have a lot of traffic. You know, so you have the personalized, personalized playlist that you can do or the curated, curated playlist. So those are some of the playlists that you need to kind of pay attention to. So let me give you some other statistics. So how can a playlist, can it really make a difference for an artist's career? Like definitely, yes. As, as of two weeks ago, Spotify actually have actually created their own top, their own um, kind of billboard charts. And if you look at a lot of the, a lot of the songs that are on the billboard top 100 or billboard charts, the lead, a lot of them are actually songs that are, are doing very good numbers on playlists. And financially, if you, I know a lot of you will like this part. If you, if you think about, uh, there was a song that gets, got added to today's hit playlist, and that's, that playlist alone has 26 million followers, yeah? 26 million followers help gener can help generate up to 20 million streams. If you're getting 20 million streams, you're, the, the worth of 20 million streams is equal is about $100,000. So that could that tells you alone how much money by you just getting added to one playlist can make the difference, not just financially, but also getting you exposed to a whole new audience. You know, so obviously a lot of playlists can easily catapult you to the Billboard 100. And that is a charting, listen guys, if you're able to get charted on, you know, a lot of the Billboard charts, then listen, that is a big thing for even press or for even PR as well as a financial remuneration that you can also get. Um, so that is definitely something, it can definitely make an artist's career. So, but it's not the only thing that you should focus on, 
but it can definitely make a big difference um, you're trying to get onto playlists. Right, playlisting, what are the different places that you can get playlisted on? Everybody always thinks of only Spotify or, or playlist, but you can get playlisted on Apple Music, you can get playlisted on Spotify, you can get playlisted on Audio Mac, but this is one that normally people obviously ignore a lot. You can get playlisted on YouTube. So if you have a music video, you have a lot of these DJs. So right now, if you Google, let's say for example, Afrobeats or African music on YouTube, there are a couple of DJs. What they do is they compile music videos and they create their own playlist. And it's so, um, like again, write down this DJ's name. His name is DJ Bolt, D DJ B-O-A-T. He, he has a big playlist. Um, so every time it drops, it drops maybe a video mix every, every week. Each of his video mix, I'm telling you, has nothing less than over 500,000 to a million views easily, easily. So because of that, he also has a playlist on Spotify. He has a playlist on Apple Music. So just don't look at one platform. Look at all the other platforms. Everybody has um, a playlisting feature within their platform. So you have Audio Mac again, you have Apple Music, you have YouTube, you have um, Google Music. They all have playlisting. Um, so definitely a lot of people always re ignore YouTube. Please don't ignore YouTube. That's a big one. Um, okay, so I'm going to go on to um, how audio mic, because I know when it comes to a lot of you guys on here, you are in Nigeria and you're in Africa, um, audio mic has their own playlisting guide. So a lot of you, this is obviously from their website. You can actually pitch your own song by yourself for trending or for playlisting on audio mic. You can, it's something that you can actually do yourself. So, but how can you, how can you get that done? I'm just going to, going to go through a quick guide for you and how to do it. Although you can pitch your stuff to them directly, but it's still not guaranteed. If you have a pen, you want to take down some of these um, email addresses. So all you need to do for Audio Mac is you literally <laughs> want to just go to Audio Mac, get a get a link of your Audio Mac song, and you want to submit it to playlist at Audio Mac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for trending as well as to try and get playlisted. But when you are trying to playlist your song on Audio Mac. A couple of very important things, and especially with any of the playlisting platforms, you want to make sure you're being very specific where what kind of playlist that you want. For example, there's a playlist called on the radar, on the radar for Afrobeats. Obviously, you want to tell them, oh, I'm trying to pitch an Afrobeat song for this specific playlist. So obviously, this is where you have to do your research. Go on to Audio Mac, research the different playlists that are there make a note of it. So when you are emailing them, you're telling them, at, oh, I have an Afrobeat song, I have a rap song, can I get it on this specific playlist? It just makes their job easier. The, the easier you make their job for them, then the better chances you're gonna have of being, of getting playlisted. Um, for, also, if you're like a rapper, there's a, a playlist for, you know, out of the bars, which is for lyrical rappers. You know what I mean? The same thing for if you're an R&B singer or whatever it is, be very specific when you, want to place your, when you actually want to kind of place your song for any kind of playlist. And that goes for Spotify, that goes for um, Google Music, for any, of, for any of the other platforms, you know? And then basically, if your playlist, if you yourself as well, you know you can actually create your own playlist. Let's say you as an artist, you can create your own playlist and you can submit that playlist to Audio Mac that you want it to be an official playlist. And I'll show you an, an example in a bit where some people themselves, so me, Steve Spotlight, I can create my own playlist and I can email Audio Mac and say, listen, can you guys please you know, make this an official playlist? And if I'm able to drive enough traffic to that playlist, they could put it up. You know what I mean? So that's another thing that you should also consider in itself. So if you, you can also pitch, so that's for playlisting, but if you want to get like your song onto their trending songs um, for Audio Mac, the, the link is the, the email that you want to use is trending at audiomac.com. And that you can send songs for trending if you have a hip hop track, RB track, electronic track, or if you have a podcast, you understand? So that is really, really very important. Um, but if you see here, I have at the bottom, there are two different emails I've given you. Um, so you have Afro Trending at Audio Mac, then Caribbean Trending at Audio Mac. But if you also go onto their websites as well, you'll be able, there's, a, there's a section that tells you. Oh, how to submit specific songs for 
for, for trending. So obviously if you're able to trend, that means anytime anybody comes into the app, they're always gonna see all those trending songs first. And hopefully that will help you be discovered a lot easier. And if somebody comes into the trending songs and they like your song, there's a better chance of your song being added to their playlist because to them they're like, oh, this song is trending, let's add it to a playlist. So that's another thing to kind of, for you guys to really consider. Um, so I'm gonna go straight into, there are a couple of things about Audio Mac a lot of people don't know. Your song, although Audio Mac is, is a free streaming um, site, for you, for your song to be, for you to start making money from Audio Mac, your song, your profile has to be monetized. But your, your profile is not always monetized straight away. Before your profile gets monetized, first, you first have to be verified. So if you see David O, for example, here, yeah, his account has been verified and it has, um, it has a, a, what's it called? A kind of like an orange tick or brown tick on it. That's just telling you that that, prof that profile has been verified. So he can make money every single time his song is streamed. But very, very importantly, if you look at the, those, if you look at the, the third, but the, the third image, when you go into your audio Mac profile, what the two places you want to pay attention to is your creator's dab, dashboard and your artist services. And from the artist services itself, you by yourself, you can actually authenticate your account. You cannot be verified unless your account has been authenticated first. And you cannot, unless obviously if you're a big artist and or by your label is behind you, then you might be able to start monetizing your account straight away. But for you to start monetizing your account on Audio Mac, you need to have over 100,000 streams on your profile. You know, it doesn't have to be one song. It could be a bunch of different songs all kind of put together. So you want to make sure you drive as much traffic to your songs as you can for you to be able to monetize the, the account. Okay, um, it says this thing is going to finish in 10 minutes. In case it cuts out in 10 minutes, then you guys just log back in. We have a couple more to kind of get through. So it just tells you how much information I have on here. So don't forget a couple of things. You want to make sure that you're able to, before you're, you're able to verify your account, you want to authenticate you your guys account. Don't back. Before, you want to be able to authenticate your account first before you're able to be verified. But if you look at Joe Boy's account in the middle, right? When you go into your artist services and your creator dashboard, what you want to do is, you want to make sure you fill in every single aspect of your profile as much as you can. Because if somebody is going to put you onto a playlist, yeah, they want to know more about you. They want to know more about you as an artist. So obviously you want to kind of, your banner at, which is at the top, you want to make sure that is, you design that and you place that up, up there. You can see obviously his profile image in the middle. Um, you want to connect, this is very, very important. You want to make sure you connect as much social media content as you can. Obviously, your, your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, your website, if you have one, you want to make sure all that is connected to your profile. I need to mute, I need to mute everyone again. Yeah, so please, if you're, on, if you're not muted, could you please um, mute yourself? So when you go into Audio Mac, please, this is really, really important. And that is the same across all your social, um, all, all the streaming um, um, services that you are able to have access at the back end, you want to fill in every single aspect of your profile. You see where it says biography here? You want to fill in your biography. I mean, so you should have a bio about you as an artist. Oh, I am still Spotlight. I've been doing music for 20 years. And this is my fifth single. I've got, I have, I, I, I won Best Upcoming Artist at Unilag. And I have five different awards. And this is my third album that I'm putting out. The more information that you put in, the better it's going to be for you as an artist. Because when the people are going, the people that are going to include you on any playlist, the one who have as much information about you as possible, and they also want to know that you're a serious artist. They want to know that okay, this person is about their business as an artist, and they're going to push um, the song or the material that you know that you actually have on the platform. So you can see Joe Boy has done a, a tremendous job in regards to his banner is up. So clearly, you can see that. A new single is out there. You can see it. his uh, profile image is there. He's connected all his social media platforms because you know, from your social media platforms in itself, people are like, oh, you know what? Let me see, you know, let me check out his, his Instagram. Let me check out his Twitter. Let me check out his Facebook page. So now what you're doing is you're not circulating those artists around your social platforms, which is really, really important. So go into your creator studio and your artist services and fill out these different sections. 
it's really, really important that you fill that, fill those sections out. A lot of people ignore it. When I go into a lot of artists, you, you, you have, there's no banner, there's no social following, there's nothing in their bio at all. There's nothing in their bio about you. Even if you've just started music and it's your first single, it doesn't matter. Fill out something. Oh, I started writing when I was five years old, and now this is my first single um, that I'm putting out. I'm, I'm an Afrobeat artist from Nigeria. Put something down. Just don't ignore those sections, okay? So, so that just gives you an example of where you need to go to. So once you go into your profile, creator studios, artist services, you can update all these different um, profiles that you have. So I'm gonna show you an example of, so if you look at um, Audio Mac, if you look at their own playlist, for example, you can see all these are, these are the different categories that they have, right? So obviously you see trending, you have um, best of the month, on the radar, hip hop, Afrobeats. You have a lot of different um, playlist categories that you could, you could be added on. So you, Obviously here you see Audio Mac, you see Audio, Audio Mac Africa. Um, these, are their, these are their own playlists, but you still have alternative playlists that you could still be featured on. Let me see if I can, hold on a second. Uh, okay, there's a, there are other playlists on here that are actually created by individuals that Audio Mac themselves are actually promoting. So that's when I told you guys that you can actually create your own playlist and get it uploaded. That is definitely something that you could definitely be doing. So, um, I remember I told you guys, you can literally, as an artist, you can get verified on a lot of streaming services across all the streaming services, Spotify, Audio Mac, Apple Music. Um, how do you get verified? How do you claim your artist page? There's a way you can actually claim your own artist page on all the streaming platforms. So I'm gonna show you guys how that can be done and why that is really, really important. It's like getting verified on Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is. Yeah, so basically, how do you get, uh, this is the way for you to actually get your song play, playlisted on a lot of the streaming services. One of the ways for you to do it, which is, which is really, really important is you want to verify and claim your artist page, then you also want to organize your profile. So like I showed you for Joe Boy, what he's done is he's organized his profile properly. He has his bio page, he has his image, he has the banner, new single coming out now. And so that is very, very important then obviously you want, to, you want to do a lot of give and take. If you do get added onto, once your song is on Audio Mac, for example, if it's on Spotify, if it's on Apple Music, you want to make sure you promote that link. So just don't tell artists, oh, my new music is out now, go and listen to it, but go and listen to it where? You know, so if you have an Audio Mac link, promote the Audio Mac link. If you have a Spotify link, promote the Spotify link, because the more traffic that you send to your song or those profiles, the more the platforms are going to think, hold on a second, this guy is doing a very good job in promoting a single. You know what? Let's put him on the playlist. Let's add him to, you know, different, um, different playlists that because they know that you're going to promote their playlist. And another thing that you shouldn't do is don't get added to a playlist and you don't promote it because that's what a lot of people do. They get added to playlists. They don't, you know, they don't promote the playlist. They don't want to say thank you to the to the playlist creator. If it's an individual like myself or whoever it is that, that adds your song to my own playlist. All you can do is ah, shout out to, you know, um, to Spotify, Afro, Afro Link for putting me on their playlist. Thank you so very much. You guys, make sure you go and stream this music on Spotify, at Spotify, at Spotify, at Audio Mac, at Apple Music. The more you promote them, the more they enjoy or they like to see that, oh, this person is doing a very good job and the more chances you're gonna get to us getting promoted for additional um, um, playlisting opportunities. So, so this, how I'm going to just give you, because there are a lot of places you can verify your account. So, but I'm just going to tell you how you can claim your artist profile on Apple Music, on Spotify, and on Google Music. I've already showed you how you can do that for Audio Mac. So, literally, what you want to do is you want to log into your artist for music for Apple. Um, you want to request your artist access. Yeah. So once you do that, all you need to do is copy and paste your Apple Music link in, in the search button. Literally, that should pull up your page. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you, once your page comes up, it will tell you who, what songs are underneath that artist. Because at times, there are some artists that might have the same name. So you don't want to link the wrong artist to the wrong song. For example, I had an artist called, who is called Zizi. 
but there are multiple ZZ on Apple Music or Spotify. So if you don't link the right, the right profile to the right music, then you most likely will not get verified or it could create, um, it could create problems for you later on. But that is just the process on how you can get it done. And also, when you claim your profile on, on Apple Music, it's not only you. Your label can also have access to the profile, your manager, you as the mm -hmm. artist. So they can also help you keep tabs. And the reason why claiming your artist profile is really, really important, there are a lot of analytics that you get a chance to see from the back end. You can see who is streaming your music from what country, what is their age group, and a lot of things that you can now use. So if you know, for example, that a lot of your audience for, for a certain song that you put out is coming from Kenya, that tells you that that song is doing well in Kenya. So what you should really do is, you should now really start promoting your song to a lot of Kenyan um, fans, or you should maybe possibly do a collaboration with another Kenyan artist, because it seems like you have a big um, Kenyan audience. So that's um, another way for you to um, use the all the data that you'll be getting um, from your artist profile. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how Deezer is another, Deezer is like a French owned streaming service. Um, so most of the time when you distribute your music through, through a lot of the DSPs, um, you would also, this is one of the places that you go to. It also takes you through the process of how to request or how to get your artists for, artists, your artist profile on Deezer, access for the, so that's it's called the Deezer Backstage. Um, you select your role again. Are you an artist? Are you a manager? Are you a label? You know, you fill out all the application requests and you wait for them to come back. Deezer, Deezer I think, are the ones that normally take the longest. Um, Spotify, AudioMac, most of the time, Spotify would do it within the same day or within two days. They, they will verify your, art, your, your account.